um, and that will be used uh, for putting together minutes um, and also for public posting um, for those who would like to, to see what you all talked about today. We're not going to have public comment today. There's going to be no public comment period formally, but um, for those of you who are joining from the public, if you want something, if you have something to share with the partnership, you can email us at publichealth.policy at state.org.us and Liz put that in the chat as well. So um, traditionally we do leave time for public comment and, and we'll be asking the partnership to consider how they want to do that at future meetings. But, but for today, um, we'll be asking the public just to listen in only, but we're glad you're here. And what else? We do have one member um, of the partnership who will be needing interpretation. I don't see that she has joined us yet today, um, but if and when she does, um, then there'll be a few kind of, um, kind of other guideline things that I'll go over at that time. But I think with that, oh, last thing. Um, the, uh, everything shared here could be subject to public records requests. So this is a public meeting. We are a state agency. Sometimes we get asked <laughs> for, for recordings of what other people have said. So just um, wanted to make sure you all know that. And unless any of my colleagues have anything else to share at this time, I think I will pass it over to Kara Biddlecombe. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kara Biddlecombe, she, her, and hers. Um, it's nice to see some of you um, who I know I've uh, met with before and, and lots of new folks. We, as Christy said, um, we are really excited uh, to get this work started and we have been waiting for um, for quite a while to uh, really uh, get your all uh, minds together and help us to implement uh, Healthier Together Oregon. Um, I want to just run through a little bit of framing for today and I will not take up a lot of time in, in doing that because really we want to spend the bulk of our time together um, getting to know each other as a group. Um, and I recognize the challenges of doing this uh, in a remote world versus in person and, um, and probably like many of you, I'm, I'm longing for the time that we can do that together. Um, so just briefly, I, I recognize that this afternoon, um, we're probably all coming into this, uh, this time together with um, a lot of heaviness uh, with what has been happening in our communities. Uh, for quite some time um, over the last year in all of the um, precious lives that have been lost and affected by COVID-19, um, as well as <clears throat> racism and oppression. Um, and I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that. Healthier Together Oregon actually had started well before uh, COVID-19, and we know that it's even more imperative now that we are um, starting to look at what things will, will look like for us as a community um, as we get beyond this virus. Um, so uh, taking a moment to really acknowledge where we're coming from and how that impacts um, how we come into this space together and, and the community that we're trying to build with you. So um, with that, I do want to um, have Christy share a little bit of some of our background. And again, this is uh, OHA's acknowledgement and commitment to you all and to this work together. So um, Christy, if you can advance. Um, first, <clears throat> OHA acknowledges and upholds our government-to-government -government relationship with, uh, with Oregon tribes. And so uh, we acknowledge that uh, what we now call Portland, Oregon, which is the site of our um, Portland State Office building, um, as well as Multnomah County, are the ancestral lands of the Multnomah, Wasco, Kaplamet, Clackamas, Cowlitz Bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala and many other tribes who have made their homes along the Columbia and Willamette rivers. And we're here because this land was occupied and its traditional people were displaced by colonists and settlers. As settlers and our guests, we recognize that the strong and diverse native communities in our region today from tribes both local and distant and offer respect and gratitude for their stewardship of these lands throughout the generations. Next slide, Christy. 
We also acknowledge that generational trauma and mistrust towards government is um, and health systems uh, underlie our work today, and the experience of harm, um, the experiences of systemic racism, colonialism, and ableism come into play in this work and the work that we are trying to do. Governmental public health has to work constantly to ensure access to services, care, um, and pathways to services for individuals who have and communities that have been intentionally left behind. Next slide. Um, so I'm just going to wrap up. I, I promise I won't do any more talking, <laughs> but I do want to acknowledge um, our commitment to community. And so I'm just going to read through these slides quickly so that um, we can be transparent in what we bring to you. OHA acknowledges that there are institutional, systemic, and structural barriers that perpetuate inequity and have silenced the voices of communities over time. OHA is committed to partnerships, co-creation, and co-ownership of solutions with communities disproportionately affected by health issues so that they can actively participate in planning, implementing, and evaluating efforts to address health issues. OHA recognizes community-engaged health improvement is a long-term and dynamic process. OHA is striving to engage with communities through deliberate, structured, emerging, and best practice processes. OHA is striving to make engagement with public health effective for communities, especially those communities that experience institutional, systemic, and structural barriers. And um, I'll pause there and just see if you have any questions or, or anything that, um, that I can help with just in terms of our overall framing and the space that we're hoping to create. But um, from there, we'll go to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. All right. Thank you, Kara. Okay, well, uh, let's get into it. Um, really excited to, to get to know all of you and hear a little bit about what brought you to this table. Um, so we really have dedicated the bulk of this agenda today and the time today for you to have um, time to get to know one another. So um, we thought instead of kind of having y'all you know, talking in, in one big room, we would take two rounds of this and the first one, is to um, we'll do a, a round a first round together in person and that will be a briefer kind of introduction where we'll ask you all to share your name your pronouns and uh, what communities you represent and by communities we mean this in a pretty holistic sense so you know what is your geographic community what is your professional community your personal community cultural community uh, whatever whatever that means to you and then um, we'll probably take a little break and then we're gonna use breakout rooms. So we're gonna move you into four rooms, probably of four or five people each and really give you some nice time just to get to know each other and, and chat a little bit. So if that sounds okay, um, I think maybe I'll go started and ask just uh, some of the other colleagues uh, at OHA to introduce yourselves first. Um, since there's, there's a lot of people at OHA supporting this work. Um, and we'll be working with all of you in the, in the year and so, you know, years to come. Um, and, and then, yeah, and then we'll, and then we'll um, move out to the partnership members for introduction. So um, I'll go first, Christy, she, her, hers. I, um, what are my communities? Well, I, I work for OHA, I work in public health. So that is my vocational community. I live in Northeast Portland. Um, in the Overlook neighborhood, I have two small children, so I find a lot of personal community with other families um, and in school and daycare settings. Um, I volunteer with Friends of Trees, which is a nonprofit here in um, Portland. I think they have locations in Eugene and other parts of the state as well, and they build community through tree planting. Um, so I have a lot of community there. And before COVID, I was in a choir. And so I really loved um, singing with other people. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Liz. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Liz Garst. I am my uh, title at the health division 
is the Social Influences on Health Strategist, and I helped to um, build the plan as well and worked with the subcommittees earlier on in the, and the partnership earlier on in the process. Um, so I live in um, inner Northeast Portland. I'm a single mama and I have um, one son who is seven years old and um, he attends Vestal Elementary. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. How about uh, Heather, do you wanna go? Or maybe, how about, let's go to Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Rao, I'm with the OHA staff. I'm a executive support specialist for CARA, and um, I'm here to help administratively with the meetings. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, and Heather is uh, doing some tech support behind the scenes, so we'll circle back to her. Um, anybody from OHA that I missed? I don't think so. There's a lot of you on this phone, on this call, which is great. Um, okay, I'm gonna call out um, partnership members and we'll just, um, I'll just go down the list with folks I see if that's okay. Or actually, you know what, I'll go alphabetical order. That'll probably be a little bit more predictable. Um, let's start with Alicia Overstreet. Hi everyone, um, my name is Alicia Overstreet. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. Um, I am a member of the BIPOC community. Um, I am multiracial. I am also, uh, we're also part of a military family. Um, so my husband, he, is um, a veteran. Um, my dad was in the army, sister, brother-in-laws, cousins, it just a whole line of <laughs> um, people in the military. Um, I am also the parent of a youth with developmental disabilities. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably in a nutshell, what my community is. Thank, Thank you. you. How about Amy Thurin? There she is. Uh, I think you're on mute, Amy. I sure was. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I got the video on though. Um, my name is Amy Thurin. My pronouns are she, hers, and communities I represent. Um, I work in healthcare and community-based organizations, so um, heavy nonprofit work. And then um, I've got a blended family with five teenagers, and they're at four different schools that include public, private, and charter. So um, I'd say my communities, um, I'm active in education and <laughs> whatever school system that may be, and um, volunteer doing cross country and my personal passion is uh, gardening and dance. So those communities as well. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Connie would be next. Hi, I'm Connie Dillinger and I have no pronouns. I work well right now. I'm on the CAC for all care. I live in Cave Junction, which is in Illinois Valley. Uh, my husband and I are retired, and we're getting ready to go to Montego Bay for our 10th anniversary. Mm. And in my spare time, I like to garden and cook. Me too. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, we can exchange recipes. Oh, I love it, Connie. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dahlia. Thank you. I think you would be next. Oops, I am on mute. Hi everyone, uh, Dalia Badrani here. Uh, I work as a district manager at uh, Lutheran Community Services. My pronouns uh, are she, uh, her, hers. 
and I uh, represent the refugee and immigrant communities. Um, I am a parent of a uh, for a eight year old um, daughter uh, who's doing online learning. Exciting. Um, and I think, yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you. All right, next would be Esther. Sorry, mail's here. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm glad to know that your mail's getting delivered. Um, my name is Esther Kim. My pronouns are they and them. And I work at the, if you can hear, there's also a small dog in my house letting me know something's happening. Um, I work for the Oregon Health Equity Alliance and um, communities. So professionally, I work in public health, health equity. We do racial justice centered health equity work. Um, I geographically so i was living in outer portland um but i recently had to move out of my housing situation so i'm temporarily based in moscow idaho which is um northern idaho <laughs> so it's been i mean in some ways the pandemic uh, has been a blessing in the sense that i can be working remotely um personally i am uh Korean American, Asian American person, um, a queer and trans person. I do a lot of, well, pre-pandemic, I was doing more organizing specifically around prison industrial complex abolition work. Um, I do a lot of um, work around fat liberation and disability justice. And, uh, you know, in my spare time, you know, it's interesting. You would think that in these circumstances, I would, I just assumed I would have more time, but um, my time seems filled to the brim every day uh, in my house. And um, I recently got a puppy, so I've never had a dog before. And so that is exhausting. And I cannot believe people have children because a dog alone is like, <laughs> requires so much. So props to those of you who have animals and dogs. <laughs> Thanks, Esther. Uh, Ian is next. Hi, everyone. My name's Ian Winbrock. Uh, I use he, his, him pronouns. Professionally, I'm part of the community at the University of Oregon. I work at the Center for Science Communication Research, where I support our research, education, and, and engagement activities for the center. Uh, I'm here representing the Whitaker Community Council. We're a place-based nonprofit that's been around for almost 50 years in the Whitaker neighborhood of Eugene, where we're doing work in partnership with OHA and Lane County Public Health for three vulnerable communities that I'm here to represent, our renters, our elders, and our unhoused neighbors. Uh, Service-wise, I'm part of a lot of different communities uh, through the boards and commission work that I do uh, on the NAACP Eugene Springfield's Housing Committee, serve on the City of Eugene's Police Commission, uh, on the Budget Committee for Lane Community College, really passionate about that work. Um, I'm also part of a, an art collective, really love making art and hanging out with folks. It's, it's tough during socially distanced times. And then uh, I'm also part of a community of folks playing chess. I, I lose recreationally at chess uh, to people all over the world, which is very exciting. If anyone wants to beat me at chess, you can ask for my chess.com login. So super excited to, to join y'all and, and to learn and grow with you. Thanks so much, Ian. Uh, Jennifer Little. Hi there. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Jennifer Little. I'm the director of Klamath County Public Health. I'm happy to be here. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And um, just as my job kind of uh, lets you know, I try to represent the whole county. And um, I am brought to this work by a passion for community and public health. And I was interested in joining the partnership because I've been really involved in our local community health improvement plan. And it's been a really fruitful partnership um, for the past several years. And I was 
um, really fortunate enough to be on the partnership last round and it was really a great experience. So I wanted to do it again, so I applied. And, and then let's see what others should know about me. I am an outdoor recreation enthusiast. I do a lot of backcountry skiing. I do a lot of mountain biking, hiking, um, starting to get into water sports. So I just really love um, being outside and in nature and Klamath County is a wonderful place to do that. Thanks, Jennifer. Good to see you. Um, let's see, Jenny is next. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jenny Poole Radway, and uh, I'm the executive director of Consejo Hispano, which is headquartered in Astoria on the Oregon North Coast. So that lets you know where I'm located. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, ella. Um, <clears throat> And in terms of um, what, my, what communities I represent, I'm a mom, uh, I'm a Latina, I'm an immigrant, uh, I work in the nonprofit community and have for a long time, and um, the rural community, I guess, although it doesn't feel rural to me, but uh, technically that's what we're labeled. Um, and I wanted to be a part of this because I'm also on uh, Governor Brown's Racial Justice Council and I do a lot of health equity work. And so this is new to me, but it is, seems very important. And so I wanted to take, take part and thank you for accepting my application and I look forward to working with all of you. And I keep my camera off because everyone in my house is using the Wi-Fi, and if I don't, then everything freezes. So I'm not being antisocial, I promise, but it's because I really, don't want to miss parts of the conversation. So thanks. Thanks, Jenny. All right, uh, Jess Gasper. Uh, Yahweh, yeah, greetings everyone. My name is Jess Gasper. I, uh, I use he, him, his. I am Marshallese, one of the most impacted populations of uh, COVID, on COVID-19. I, I have the honor and privilege of serving as the president of the uh, Oregon Marshallese Community Association. Uh, I love basketball, I love the Blazers, and uh, I'm excited to be here just to have, you know, a, you know, Islander or Kofa Nations, you know, presence at these meetings is something that, you know, we're, we're, and, you know, we're honored to be a part of. So um, I'm excited to, you know, see what we can do together and, and learn and grow. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. Glad you're here. Uh, Kimberly Lane. Hi there. I'm Kim. I am a tribal member of the Confederated Tribes of Sluts Indians. I work for my tribe in community health, um, doing a lot of health equity. Lately, it's been vaccines. Um, and uh, so I'm part of that community. Uh, community. My bands are Tututni and Shetco, so I come from the Gold Beach re region before um, relocation. Um, geographically, we're across 11 counties. I live in Salem and I drive to Salutes, and that's about 15 miles outside of Newport. My pronouns are she, her, and hers, and um, I'm here to represent uh, other tribal people and tribal health issues. Thanks, Kim. Nice to meet you. Uh, Lauren and baby. Yay. Hello. Um, hi, my name is Lauren. I work at United Way of the Columbia Willamette. I use she, her, hers pronouns. And this is Mari. Um, she uses she and they pronouns. Um, I will be stepping away after I introduce myself to put her down, um, but I'll be back. Uh, the communities I represent um, I live in outer Southeast Portland in the J District. So I represent, I represent the J District community, um, which is one of the most diverse communities in Portland. Um, and I am mixed race, Asian American and white. And so I represent the Asian community, the mixed race community, Hapa community. Um, and I have a background in public health and I'm excited to um, kind of come back to that work, which I haven't been as active in 
um, in the last couple years, uh, but also representing United Way as a partner in this type of collaborative. So, awesome. That's it. Thank you so much, um, let's see, Monica, Yellow Owl. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Monica Yellow Owl. I'm calling in from Klamath Falls, Oregon. I currently am working as or serving my community as the Behavioral Health Manager for Youth and Family Guidance Center, which is the Klamath Tribes Behavioral Health Program. I have been with Tribal Health for nine years and have been working in behavioral health for 16 years. Absolutely um, love the work that I do. Um, I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I am sent to partnership on behalf of Dr. Obina Olerabe, who is our fairly new health general manager um, and really has a vision for a tribal voice to be at every table and um, be represented on some of these committees and, and boards and such at um, various level, county levels, state levels, um, national levels, et cetera. So, he earmarked me for partnership, so um, uh, usually you can find me with about 100 uh, to 1 billion plates spinning at the same uh, time. So, um, you know, I'm excited to come in and learn. Um, I, I did let him know that I would probably be more of a learner at this table, um, but I'm always excited about those opportunities. Um, I absolutely love the work that I do. Uh, you know, they say do what you love so it never feels like you're going to work. And even though I can put in 60 hour work weeks, um, it really feels like I am just literally able to come to work to be an indigenous person. And I didn't really try to keep my role um, aligned with uh, what my role would have been traditionally before contact, you know, as a helper and a healer in my community. And so um, I look forward to um, challenges every day of how to help my people transcend, you know, the impacts and effects of historical trauma. And so if it is represented in policy work, if it's re represented in work done in the trenches, like right now I'm kind of single-handedly running a homeless camp um, as one of our newest service elements. And so, um, you know, I, I love the um, way that our leadership allows us to be really creative and really hands-on with our community. and do these um, real heavy um, approaches with our with our community and frame it all in um, cultural language and cultural understanding and, and things like that. So um, I'm passionate about the work that I do. I take it extremely serious because I'm a tribal person working for my people, um, but I'm also from the community that I serve and I um, have lived in Klam Falls um, mostly my entire life. And so um, the people that I serve, you know, their risk factors are my risk factors. Um, their losses are my losses, and so that's something that I, I carry very seriously with me in the work that I do. So um, any little bit of movement I see with our people, I'm constantly um, in rejoice mode over that. Uh, we have a lot of trauma to transcend, and, um, and so I look um, forward to um, being um, part of the partnership, um, and I hope that I'm able to contribute what's needed and what's asked and also stand from a vantage point and and see where tribal um, voice can be lended. Um, so um, thank you. Thank you so much, Monica. It's beautiful. Um, Rachel Schultz is next. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Schutz. I am here with the um, I'm, I work for the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Portland metro area, so working with youth and their families um, and the communities that we are in. We are in the Washington, uh, Multnomah, and Clackamas counties, and I live in Washington County. Um, my, uh, the communities that I come from is my family is a large, blended, multiracial, multiethnic um, family. Um, I'm a foster and adoptive parent. I have a 15 year old um, and hoping to be the voice of youth and um, hoping to have the opportunity to hear from my families and my communities about what is impacting them and what, um, what I can bring to the table on their behalf. Um, 
and try to use myself as a vessel for their voices. Um, and the other piece that brought me to this work is I'm very passionate about um, working on systems level change for trauma and um, things that are going on in our communities or things that are affecting children and families as they are growing up in our communities in Oregon. Um, and what work can we do to try to um, change that at a state level so that we are not working downstream um, with so much mental health or health system or all those sorts of things that um, what work can we do to prevent them in the first place. Um, and then also the intersection of ACEs, um, trauma, and race and racism in our structures. And how can we root that out as well? Um, so thank you very much for having me and allowing me to lend a voice. Thanks so much, Rachel. Great to meet you. Um, Stan Baker. Hello, Hi. I'm uh, Stan Baker, and for me it's he, him, or his. I live here in Corvallis, Oregon, and I'm a father, a husband, grandfather. I make my income from agribusiness, specifically the grass seed industry, but my passion is in working with those that are poor, uh, Deconstructing systemic racist, uh, racism is near and dear to my heart. I'm especially thankful for the Confederated Tribes of Celeste, because when I was pastoring at Mountain Gospel Fellowship in Fall City, Oregon, we were picking up about 2,000 pounds of food, fresh produce every week from Salem Food Bank. We would bring it up and distribute it to 150 some families in Fall City. And it was because of the Confederate Tribes of Celeste, they gave us a grant that paid for all of the gasoline and the fuel that allowed us to do that work in Falls City. Here in Corvallis, um, I am pastoring a church here in Corvallis. We are located in one of Oregon's poverty hotspots, and we are focused on meeting the needs of the community. Uh, this year, working with Benton County, we were able to obtain KN95 masks, and every month we've been giving them away. So far, we've given away almost 18,000. KN95 mass throughout our community at no charge on the first Saturday of each month. Uh, we also partner with the um, dental van that comes out of Portland and we go Friday, nine people here in our community that otherwise could not have dental care, we're able to have free dental care. That's where my, my heart is. As far as personally, um, I, I love to run, I love to garden, I love to cook, I, I love to sing. And um, I'm truly grateful that I'm part of the partnership. Thanks so much, Stan. Really glad you're here. Uh, Susan Blaine. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Susan Blaine. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm community health director for Peace Health Oregon. Um, Peace Health is a mission-driven healthcare organization that has four hospitals in Lane County. We also have hospitals and healthcare systems in Alaska and Washington, and we're, are, we're based out of Vancouver, Washington. Um, in my role as Community Health Director for Oregon, I interface with the with the community service and health organizations that take care of our community outside the walls of the medical group in the hospital. So I frequently interface and work on projects with housing organizations, um, with food organizations and food banks. Um, we work on projects that support mental health and opioid treatment. And we also work to promote community health workers and um, peer support programs in our communities. Uh, in Lane County, we have, we operate two emergency departments in the Eugene Springfield metro area and 
We have a hospital in Cottage Grove in South Lane County and a hospital out at the coast, Peace Harbor in Florence. So we, uh, we work really firsthand with a lot of the, um, the impact of social determinants of health on our community. And we as an organization work hard toward health justice. Um, some of the programs that we work in are with St. Vincent de Paul for housing, Food for Lane County and Florence Food Share. Um, we work closely with um, 15th Night, which is a youth organization because we frequently find youth um, having to board in our emergency departments because they have nowhere else to go. Um, so those kind of, those kind of projects that really help people stabilize and remain healthy while they're outside of the healthcare system are the opportunities that I have to work for our organization and for the community. Um, personally, I ski, I cycle, I kayak, I like anything outdoors in the Pacific Northwest is kind of my passion. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you so much, Susan. All right, tomorrow, did I say it right? Yes, it's pretty close. It's uh, Timur. Um, yes, hello, my name is Timur. Um, I use pronouns he, his, him. Um, geographically, I was born in a small Central Asian country. It's um, called Tajikistan. It's lo located in Central Asia. And uh, my family, a uh, single mom and two sisters and I immigrated to the United States back in 1998. And ever since then, we've been living here in Oregon. And um, right now, I live in Gresham. Um, professionally, uh, I'm in marketing and a small business owner. Um, but my passion is community work, community engagement, and uh, anything that has to do with community. Um, I am a father of three, uh, the newest member of a family. Uh, he is only a month and a half old, so very tiny. Um, I enjoy photography. Um, I do a lot of family photos, um, but uh, the reason I wanted to be part of this work is because I see how uh, underserved the community is and culturally, like I mentioned, I was born in Tajikistan, but I do have Slavic roots. Um, my family on my mother's side, they come from Eastern Europe. Uh, and on my dad's side, it's more of a that Central Asian part of the world. And um, yeah, the nonprofit that I, um, I'm involved with is called Slavic Community Center of Northwest. And they've been doing a lot of amazing work, especially during the COVID times, helping out the community, um, getting information out, getting out PPE and other resources. So that's, that's where my heart is at. That's what I'm passionate about. And hopefully we'll be able to work together and um, provide help and resources uh, to the community, the Slavic community. Thank you so much, Tamar. Nice to meet you. And talk. Did I say it right? Yeah, you said it perfectly, Christy. Sabaiti, everyone. I'm with Jess in terms of my excitement and privilege to be here and be in community with you all. Um, also, it's been really great to hear each of your introductions and see those faces, your faces, those who can turn on your camera. Um, my name is Talk Sonale Gillespie, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I represent on a professional level um, Health Share of Oregon. I get the privilege to serve as the Director of Community Health. I also serve on the Oregon Commission on Asian Pacific Islander Affairs, which is part of Governor Brown's four Oregon Advocacy Commissions. I live in Hillsborough. My husband and partner have the joys of being parents to our two biracial children, ages 12 and 10, who continue to teach us so much about navigating between multiple cultures and worlds. Um, I am part of the refugee and immigrant community, specifically um, what we call the 1.5 generation. 
I'm a 1.5 generation from the country of Laos who was displaced from the Vietnam War, also known as the secret war in Laos. I also come from the limited English proficient and English as a second language community. Um, hey to all those in the house who speak multiple languages and live in two thought worlds and who may not show up linear, who are circular and storytellers and narrative um, communicators. My, um, I think lastly, I think I'm not looking at the screen, but my life's work similar to many of you who have spoken has been focused on advocating for communities impacted by inequitable systems like deeply ingrained white supremacy. Um, and then I think lastly was on my spare time. I enjoy time alone and in meditation and I practice what the amazing Oprah calls Jomo. And for those who don't know, that is joy of missing out. Uh, that's new, Jomo. I'm going to use that one. Great. Thank you. Um, Veronica Leonard. Hi, thank you. I'm still chuckling over Jomo. I have lots of family members who have FOMO, so I'm going to have to teach them that. Um, Veronica Leonard, I use she, her, ella pronouns. I uh, represent Latino Network, which is a culturally specific community-based organization in the Tri-County area. We serve approximately 9,000 people each year through multiple programs. Um, the bulk of our participants do identify as Latino, immigrants, refugees. We have a large youth program. We work with uh, multi-generational families. We work with undocumented families. Um, and now we've been focusing a lot on COVID response. Um, my position is to oversee our health and wellness department, um, which is the one leading the, the COVID response activities. So we are uh, in partnership with Multnomah County to provide weekly testing at our Rockwood office. Um, we're also moving into vaccine clinics to make sure that we can get that miserable 4% of Latinos vaccinated to a more representative number of who we make up in this area of Portland, of Oregon. Um, I identify as a public health social worker. My training is in both those areas. I am deeply passionate about reproductive justice and serve on the board of NARAL, Pro-Choice Oregon. Um, I'm also very interested in mental health and we are looking at how um, we can more effectively support the participants of Latino Network in their mental health. Um, we know that that is a huge gap um, in our community and ve very few culturally specific services that are provided for our folks um, and wanting to be better um, providers in that way. Um, I am an immigrant from Mexico. I moved here in 2015, um, but had previously lived in Eugene, um, where I went to university. I was very um, blessed to receive a full scholarship there. Um, I was able to transition from Mexico to, to Oregon in that way. Um, I then have worked abroad in uh, reproductive health and rights, um, including at an organization in Mexico City that focused on um, reproductive rights from a Catholic perspective, um, recognizing that such a large proportion of Mexicans um, are Catholic and the Catholic Church has such a huge role in um, politics. And so trying to separate those two. Um, deeply passionate about increasing health, dis uh, decreasing health disparities and um, my work at Latino Network has been focused on that um, in several different areas, including education, health, um, sexuality, and of course now COVID response. Um, I am a mom, I am married. I have a, an almost two year old and I'm currently pregnant. I'll be giving birth in about 11 weeks. So you'll see me here for a little bit and then I'll skip out on you while I'm caring for my new one and trying to figure out <laughs> how to deal with the additional chaos that will be um, a second child. Um, I recently rebuilt my bike and we've been taking our son 
on bike rides now that the weather is nicer, but I'm going to need some of those like Harley Davidson um, handlebars because my belly is getting way too big to be bending over. Uh, that's a little bit about myself. Thanks so much, Veronica, and congratulations. Um, all right. We made it to the end of the alphabet with Kurt. Where are you, Kurt? Good afternoon. So what a great group of, uh, of individuals. I'm Kurt Toombs. I'm the, uh, the Chief Executive Officer for Eastern Oregon Center for Independent Living. I'm representing uh, the Association of Oregon Centers, uh, Centers for Independent Living across the state of Oregon. I've been a member of AOCEL for 21 years. And uh, I've been the Chief Executive Officer for Eastern Oregon Center for Independent Living for 21 years also. Uh, my home life and my work life blend together. They're the same interest. I have a uh, very big interest in disability international law. I love to travel to different countries. I love to study the laws in each country. And uh, uh, for the, let's see, I was a member of the past membership or partnership uh, committee and probably learned more than contributing. It was absolutely a wonderful experience. I am a person, uh, a member of the deaf and hard of hearing community. So I am a person with a disability. And uh, on my spare time, I think I mentioned I love disability international law and also improving the LGBTQIA plus two spirit community uh, support services in, in rural Eastern Oregon. Y'all are, yeah, I am just so humbled <laughs> to be here with you all and just um, so, um, so honored and excited that you wanted to be a part of this. And I just cannot, cannot wait for what is to come. Um, we have one final member, Maria has joined us, um, and uh, Maria... Tenemos a una persona final, Maria. Oh, great. Martin, are you able to translate for Maria, or should we reboot and, um, and try we, to do it that way? We're, we're in, so I'm going to interpret whatever you have to say. Hello, everybody. This is the interpreter. Sorry. Okay. Uh, just... Um, let Maria know what she needs to know. I'm interpreting simultaneously over the phone with okay. her and whatever she has to say, she can see everybody, but she will be saying to me and I will be relaying uh, over, over Zoom, okay? Okay, okay, thank you so much. And um, this, thank you everybody. This is the first time that we have done um, interpretation um, in a meeting. So just really appreciate your grace and patience as we um, work this out and make these spaces inclusive for people. Um, so Maria, welcome. Sorry, uh, sorry for the delay in getting started here with you. Really glad that you are here. Um, we will make sure to get the uh, introductions that you missed translated uh, for you. But we would love um, if you want to share a little bit about yourself, your name, pronouns, and a little bit about the communities that you are representing here in this in this meeting today in this group. Hi, I'm, I'm Maria Morales Donahue. And I represent Ubakri in Hermiston. I am completely uh, privileged to being able to serve the community and especially in this area. Estamos bien, Maria, siga. It's important for me that you know that working with you all is, is, is a huge blessing for my life. 
being that as a team, we're going to be able to achieve that we can all arrive to prevention and to actually a holistic way of living. Right now, with the pandemic as it is, it is the best way to go about it, to work as a team because of talent and to also be able to, to apply it with love and respect towards our communities. I have the satisfaction of being able to also being able to serve in the area of mainly the, the farms and fields where our workers have long days and some of them have been infected by COVID. Notwithstanding, because of the help that we're being able to provide to them with medical coverage at a, at a, at a cost, being that they, are, they have no documents and also being able to help them with work. And right now we're also being able to provide a, a, a basically a submission and an application for them to be able to apply for jobs. These are times that are difficult for the entire community, not just uh, internal, but also at a world, world level, but also we, we can actually provide a work and do such a big job, which is to provide hope to these communities because they're not, not just one person uh, cannot achieve this. All of us together, pushing together can achieve this. However, I unfortunately cannot communicate in English, but I have been able to understand the, your, your hearts. And that is what's the most beautiful thing of these times. I'm a 71 year old woman. And however, I've had the privilege and the benefit uh, that my organization has given me the opportunity to serve the community with the, my experience, which is mainly in, in, in the fact that we're a multicultural country. And because of that, we are loaded with answers for these times or in times like these. So not just Mexico, but Spain and other nations that are represented here. We're all America. And I think we can all achieve in these times what we have decided to achieve. Thank you very much to allow me uh, the opportunity of being the representative of Uganda here in this, rep in, this in this meeting. And we are all wanting to do this. And with Hermiston, we're all Ugaldi. Thank you very much. And great, you have a great afternoon and thank you for my interpreter as well. Thank you so much, Maria. So great to meet you. And just that one, one other question. Um, your name on Zoom says Callie Morales and I'm wondering if you prefer Callie or Maria. Well, actually, I prefer to be called Kali because that's what the community knows me by. Uh, uh, that's because in order to differentiate me from my sisters, which is, it's three of us, two of us were Maria. So she started calling me Kali. So uh, that's the way they know me uh, over there and our, my neighborhood in Mexico and in Cancun as well. So in order to differentiate me from my sisters, uh, I was, I, I responded to Kelly. So I actually prefer to be called Kelly. So thank you very much. Yeah. It is great. Oh man, y'all, you are, I just, um, have chills thinking about what you are all going to accomplish together. Um, I just can't wait. Um, we are gonna uh, get into breakout rooms here for a bit, but before that, um, I think maybe we'll take a break, like a five minute break. Does that sound okay to everybody? Um, Those get, get the break together and yeah, Kara. I was wondering if folks wouldn't mind um, actually disconnecting from Zoom and then coming back, uh, I think maybe 10 minutes, Christy, just so that we can see if we can switch around some of the functionality with the, um, with the interpreter. Um, since we haven't been able to kind of get that going while we've been live and then we'll we'll come back together. Okay, folks. Sounds great. So we're gonna two ten. Um, it'll be the same, it'll be the same link though. So we'll see you like at 105.